Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel Rogers, Mama Mentor, and today we are talking about seeking the why. Why are our kids acting the way that they are? You might be tempted as a parent to think when your child is acting out that it's just simply because they're a bad kid. You might think, well, that's just what children do. They act out, they're bad. We've got to control them. We've got to micromanage them because how else are they supposed to learn how to control their impulses and emotions and become a good, strong, emotionally stable adult? The problem with that type of logic is that it is actually counterintuitive because children don't learn how to control their impulses and emotions by being controlled and micromanaged. They learn it by being modeled how to control impulses and emotions. So when their behavior gets escalated and we meet that escalated behavior with more escalated behavior, what happens? It just makes the situation worse, right? So then we tend to escalate ourselves even more. We tend to yell louder. We tend to get more aggressive because we are trying to show them who's in control and eventually they will calm down or shut down and we think we've won we think we've taught them the lesson but in actuality all they felt was you're a threat and I have to shut down and shut off my emotions to stop making you angry which creates either people pleasers or rebels when we make parenting only about behavior, we are only ever treating the symptom, not the cause. Instead, we need to be asking ourselves, what is the why here? Why is my child acting this way? What do they need? How can I, as a parent, help by meeting that need? When we understand that all behavior, negative behavior, is simply a form of communication, it changes our perception. It changes our perspective, doesn't it? When we realize that our children aren't just acting out because they're bad or they're not just rebelling because they just have this innate need to rebel, but they're actually trying to communicate, I need something and I need you to either help me identify what that is or I know what it is, but I need you to meet the need. So how do we identify needs? Well, our children have five basic needs and then they have five love tanks that might need to be filled. In this video, I'm gonna go over the five basic needs the most. If you want to learn more about the five love tanks or the five love languages of children, there's an incredible book from Gary Chapman. He has a book for adults called The Five Love Languages, and then he has a book for children called The Five Love Languages of Children. I have done some TikTok videos on each of these love languages, how to identify them in your children, and then some ways to meet those needs. So if you wanna check that out, go ahead to my TikTok to find more information there. But today we're gonna to talk about these five basic needs. Need number one is the sense of connection. Children need to feel connected to us as their parents and caregivers. And they actually need our connection most in the moments where their behavior is the worst. Think about a child's behavior like a kite that's flying off into the wind if it doesn't have something to anchor it back down to the ground and reel it slowly back in, it's gonna be a lost cause, right? Well, our child is very similar. Sometimes they take off with their behavior and they don't know how to reel themselves back in and to anchor them, so we have to be that safe space for them. And we do that by connecting to them in their good behaviors and their bad behaviors. One of the best ways that you can do this is that when your child is acting out, you get down at eye level or even below eye level and you get into a posture of comfort and welcoming. And when you're in that place of welcoming them and opening up your arms to them and getting on their level, you can then help them by validating their emotion and letting them know that you are a safe space for them to feel whatever it is they're feeling. Even if that is anger toward you, let them feel that anger. It's normal. Emotions are normal. It's okay to feel our feelings, but what we do with them is a different story. But they are gonna learn a really good lesson here by you acting, you're them acting out toward you and you modeling the control of emotion and impulses in that moment you're gonna want to yell, you're gonna want to get frustrated too, but when you model control of impulses and emotions, it opens up that prefrontal cortex and allows them to learn from your behavior, learn because you're showing them, this is how we do it. 
The second basic need is power. Imagine for a second if you were in your child's shoes and you were in a home where you were constantly told what you would or would not eat, what you could or could not do, where you would or would not go, when and when not to go, it would kind of feel a little bit like a prison, wouldn't it? Our children act out whenever they feel like they have no sense of control or power for their environment, their choices, their opinions, and things like that. So we can help them by giving them options, giving them choices. If you have younger children like I do, my daughter is two, I will let her pick out her shoes. I will let her either get into her full bucket of shoes and pick out whichever ones she wants to wear, or if we're going somewhere special where she needs to look a certain way, then we will have her do two pairs of shoes and I'll let her choose which one she wants to wear. I actually have personal experience in this with my own childhood memories with my mom. I have always been more on the creative side of things and whenever I was young, like in kindergarten and first grade, one of my ways to express myself was through the way that I dressed. And I would want to wear the wackiest outfits and I remember fighting constantly with my mom over this. Every single morning before school, she wanted me to wear a certain thing that looked super cute and I wanted to wear what I wanted to wear. I usually went for comfort um, and I a lot of times my colors didn't match. We have pictures of it now because ultimately my mom got to the point where she said, you know what, this is one of those pick your battles things. I am expending so much energy fighting with her over this. If she wants to wear something that looks crazy to me but looks amazing to her, I should let her express that creativity and let her go with it, you know, within reason. I fully remember what it felt like when my mom empowered me to choose what I put on my body and choose how I expressed my creativity in what I wore. It felt amazing to me and it really alleviated a lot of the stress in our relationship and helped me feel more connected to her. The third need that children have is for freedom. Freedom and power kind of go hand in hand, but one of the areas that we help Peyton express her sense of freedom is through bodily autonomy. We don't force her to give hugs or kisses or high fives or to be held by anyone, including my husband and myself. There are many reasons that we have chosen to do this with her, but one of the primary reasons is that we want to help her protect herself against abuse in the future. Because when we force her to do things that she may not be wanting to do in those moments, especially as it relates to her own body, that just opens up the door for her to say, well, if a, per a perpetrator or a predator comes after me in the future, I kind of have to say yes, because I've never been taught that I can say no. Now, when it comes to daily activities that have to be done, like getting dressed or changing her diaper or um, brushing her teeth, taking a bath, things like that, those are times where we don't give her really the option whether to do them or not to do them because they have to be done. They are basic daily tasks that have to be done. But what we do instead in those moments is make them fun. We play a game with them. We make it interesting. We make it fun. She has never had a diaper change where we didn't sing a song or play a game. She has never brushed her teeth where we didn't make it exciting and fun because children learn best through play. The fourth basic need is survival. Your children might be acting out simply because they're hungry or tired or thirsty and they just need a survival need met. I joked in one of my previous Instagram videos that I typically go for snacks first. When my child is acting out, I will say, do you need a snack? And nine times out of 10, that's exactly what she needs. And then the fifth and final need is fun. Children need to have fun. They get bored and some of them get bored very easily. So they need something to keep them entertained. They need an energy expenditure. One of the best things that you can do is try to get your children outside. Now during the winter months, kind of depends on where you live. That can be a little bit more difficult. But if you can get them outside, get them running, do races, have them um, go pick up rocks or leaves or sticks, count how many sticks that they have. There's so many different games that you can play outside. Now, if you can't do that outside, one of the funnest ways to let them have fun and play and expend their energy inside is to build an obstacle course and play something like the floor is lava. You can't touch the floor. Um, even if you have a toddler, you know, obviously your child would have to be walking to be able to play this game, but you could put 
books on the floor and have them step on books or crawl on pillows over a set of pillows around the living room or kitchen or, or dining room and let it be fun and let them get some energy out while spending time with you. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, you're going to start to see some shifts in behavior whenever you let them have this outlet. As always, I hope that this was encouraging for you. I hope that you gained some powerful tools to help you take one more step into this respectful parenting journey. Thank you so much for letting me be part of this process with you. I am not an expert. I am not a parenting coach. I'm just a mom who is learning out loud. And so thank you for letting me speak into your life and into your parenting journey. I hope you're encouraged and I will see you next week. Bye y'all.